Hello, I'm Tom Intier. Welcome back to tonight. We're talking with Stu J. Raj, and you are a linguist, and you just learned to speak Vietnamese on very short notice. How did that come about? <laughs> about three weeks, probably about four weeks ago now, a friend of mine, he's a, a very, very brilliant financial mind, and he was offered an opportunity to have a lucrative position in Vietnam, uh, in, a, in a financial position, but he said, I've only got one thing, I don't speak Vietnamese. And uh, he's actually just got his Thai citizenship and he's thinking, oh, do I go to Vietnam or not? He said, how about this? I'll, I'm going to the US, but when I come back, I'll make a decision. And I'm thinking I'm going to hire you to learn Vietnamese and then teach me. And so he got on the airplane, we spoke on the phone and I uh, thought, that's an interesting concept. And so my, my, my brain started buzzing and I got on the internet and started doing some searches and, I'm, and as I was learning about this Vietnamese language, it's like this missing link in the, the group of languages that I, I, I spoke. So I went and made books up and word lists and researched uh, and within about three or four days I had about 1,500, 2,000 words um, and working out all the links into Chinese, ancient Chinese, Thai and um, it was fantastic. Uh, it, with by the third day, I'd, I'd started to write Vietnamese letters to. Is it true you sleep with a dictionary? Many. <laughs> <laughs> that you take it a dictionary on, as reading material to bed at night. Yeah, uh, most 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 of the time, I'm I'm reading. I've always got something in at at a arm's distance that I can read, and nearly all of those things are language based, and many of them dictionaries. So when I moved here about 15 years ago, the internet was 300 baud. Right. And that is about slow enough to, if you want a picture, <laughs> to look at a picture, it'll take maybe 20 minutes to load. Right. Uh, between then and now, the speed has dramatically increased. Right. That must be a real it's, boon for a person is, like it you. Is, now, when Thailand knocked YouTube out for so many months, uh, that, that was tough. Yes, I just, I, YouTube, it's fantastic. You can get in there and use the language. So many people, and you hear in Thailand, oh, we don't have the opportunity to use the language. Now it's rubbish. You can just go on and go onto YouTube or any of these, uh, or anywhere on the internet for that matter, and uh, access resources as though you're in the country. It's uh, fantastic. But as an internet user, when YouTube was banned, the broadband facilities were easier to use because people were not streaming. on video servers streaming video. <laughs> right, right, except for those ones that were tunneling through to somewhere. But, uh, I don't know about those people. <laughs> the Internet has, has changed a lot of the way people research things. Like right. researching for this interview, I went to Google. Right. And Google is a fantastic tool. It's fantastic and scary. <laughs> there's, uh, there's everything about everything out there. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about Google, I tell you what, how it's changed learning languages. Supposing I hear a new word, and this is one of the reasons why I learned to type straight off. Uh, I just go into Google and type that word in, and you will get a million hits of that word in its natural, organic context. And you can go in and see how it's used. Rather than ask somebody, how is this word used? Normally, people have a tendency to tell you the ideal of what they think that word should be used as. But in Google, bang, and you've just got millions of hits to see how this And you this can play it back the way it sounds by a native speaker. Well, you, you can play it back the way it sounds if it's done streaming, but even um, more so, and especially with Thai, the Thai sound system, when you're using it, you'll find on web boards and blogs, people will write the way they speak. And so, wadita, uh, you know exactly who's, you know, what they're saying. Or if someone laughs with the letter five, 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 that's a ha, 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 ha. But if somebody could laugh with e, 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 and you know that that must be a girl or, or, or a somewhat feminine male laughing. <laughs> um, but it's all rendered in the way that they type on the internet, which you couldn't have done years ago. So I think the internet's fantastic as far as language learning is concerned. Is it going to be replaced by another tool? Or is it just going to be redefined? Do you mean the internet? Yeah. I, I, it's, it's always changing. What's the basis of the internet? Just the way, the way that we transfer information. And so whether it's through this internet that we use or through satellites later on or IP, I, I think the main thing is that we can transfer information and we can publish our own information and, and have access to each other's information at that speed. Um, that's the... That's communication now. It's not only the future of communication. I mean, reading your blog, uh, finding out about how you write and the way you write, 
Right. It's really interesting. Right. Oh, really? That's yes. <laughs> you don't get a chance to hear that. No, no, I know. I, I, I just write. There's a, since those clips went up on, on YouTube, there's been a community of you know, linguists from all over the place that are really excited that there are other people out there that are excited about learning languages. So I've tried to put things out there that would cater to them as well. It's a relatively small group. When you think of statisticians and linguists, you couldn't fill up an auditorium Probably. with people with your capabilities. Uh, but no, with the pe people, when you say the capabilities, but the people who use language, you've got every person sure. on the planet. Sure. And this is one of the key things that I would use in learning a language. I try and avoid linguists. Yeah, they're good for, for, for information like that, but uh, you try and learn skills in being able to elicit real samples of the information. And the thing that linguistics helps me with is that I guess I have the skills to, to analyze actually what they're doing and separate what they say they're doing from what they're really doing. What do you do for commercial I mean, being a linguist is not very no. lucrative. <laughs> no, and uh, language for me is a tool. Uh, it allows me, when I'm in Thailand, I can be taken in as a Thai. When I'm in Indonesian, I can be taken in as Indonesian or China, China as Chinese. When I'm in India, these companies, I have multinational companies hire me to become the, I'm also a Dale Carnegie trainer uh, in my past, and now I, f I facilitate and do training, negotiation, sales. So those things fit on top of the language. The language is, is the, uh, the, the boat that takes me for the ride. Um, but say for a company you know, like Pepsi, if I'm uh, in Indonesia or I'm in Thailand, I can help them implement their international policies at a local level. And then if the Thais, they're seeing this policy and they're thinking, well, this won't work in Thailand, and they don't have a route to speak with the executives up there, I can bundle their uh, ideas in a palatable package for the Westerners and for their executive management and find a way to implement international policies at a local level. All right, Stu is not just an accomplished linguist, he's also an author, and we'll talk about his book when we come back on tonight, so stay with us.